when is enough going to be enough in the city? This morning on News 12, community advocates in Mount Vernon there are calling for peace after a 37-year-old was fatally stabbed. Plus, never in a million years would have guessed this would happen. An 18-year-old has been arrested after an apparent stabbing in Chester. Police tell us that the victim is his father. Well, welcome to News 12 and News12.com. I'm Jen Seelig. More on those two stories in a couple of minutes. But first, let's talk weather. Meteorologist Skylar Day Harmon has your full weekend forecast. Hey, Skylar. Jen, good morning. In general, our Saturday is going to start off relatively nicely. We have a mix of some sun and clouds, but it is, in in general, a nice, decent start. But then the second half is where we start to see a bit of a turn. We're going to see some storms working their way back into the picture. We'll time that out in a moment. And then in general today, overall, it is just going to be hot, sticky, humid. We're still in that heat advisory. It's just going to be kind of, in general, a nasty, warm, humid day. And then we have those storms as well. So temperature Temperatures already working their way into the low 80s by around 11 a.m. Then we're cruising up to the high 80s or the low 90s in some places. But the feels like temperatures are going to be much closer to the mid to high 90s. So feeling close to 100 degrees today. And those storms work their way in into parts of the afternoon and linger into our evening. So timing this out, you can see we're mostly okay as we head through the early parts of the day. Then as we get into early parts of the evening and into the evening is when we could see some of those storms moving through. Okay, Skylar, thank you. Well, the plea deals for the men accused of plotting the 9-11 terror attacks have now been revoked. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin signing off on that decision last night. As we've reported, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed and two other defendants agreed to the deal earlier this week. The plea agreement does not include the death penalty, but to serve life in prison. Nearly 3,000 people were killed on 9-11. Hudson Valley Congressman Mike Lawler expressing his relief following the news, saying in part, quote, This is my sincere hope that our 9-11 victims and families receive the justice they deserve. And I'm thankful that Secretary Austin saw reason here. Police are investigating a deadly stabbing of a 37-year-old man in Mount Vernon. City officials said this happened around 1020 Thursday night near the corner of Union Avenue and Thir East 3rd Street. We're told that the victim died at the hospi hospital from multiple stab wounds. While no suspects are currently in custody at this time, a community advocate is right now speaking out about the violence happening in the city. And when is enough going to be enough in the city? Where the leadership takes control and speak on issues like this. This area is a hot spot. This area is a hot spot. I sat down many nights or many days, excuse me, with the police commissioner and understand the tone of the hot spots is that. We talked about it. The community is concerned. The city is not safe. As I said in my last message, and leadership has to take control and do something about it. Mayor Sean Patterson Howard issuing a statement to News 12 reminding residents that violence has no place in her city. Anyone with information about the stabbing is urged to contact police. A teenager from Chester is being charged now with the bloody assault of his father. Police responded to Lake Region Boulevard Thursday to find 43-year-old Kevin Rivers in a neighbor's backyard with a stab wound to his chest. The suspect, 18-year-old Jaden Rivers, is also facing forcible touching charges from two alleged incidents that happened back in June. A man who just started renting a room inside of their home tells us that he got along well with them. He gave me the tour when I first was going to move in, and then he just, he seemed really chill. Never in a million years would have guessed this would happen. Jaden is currently now behind bars. He was arraigned on one count of felony assault. A Poughkeepsie man who pulled a gun on officers will spend the next 10 years now behind bars. Authorities say Leopoldo Darte Palacios pled guilty to weapons charges. Last August, officers say that they approached him on Main Street in response to a police report. During a confrontation, an officer shot him in the arm to try to disarm him. The 38-year-old will also be under post-release supervision for five years. In Dutchess County, 42-year-old Christopher Ortiz from B Beekman was arrested for trying to rob a motel room. This was Thursday night. Police say he had a knife while he broke into the room at, a, at the Pine Grove Motel. He's facing several charges, including criminal mischief. And a car crashing into a mattress firm store in Hartsdale. This happened at the shop on Central Park Avenue Friday morning. The car rammed its way inside of the store and then knocked over several mattresses inside. 
Luckily, no one was injured. The cause remains under investigation. We are a few days away from when local police departments will mark National Night Out. It's on Tuesday, and it's celebrated nationwide. The goal is to improve relationships between police departments and the people they serve. The Port Chester Police Department will host its event at Lion Park from 5 to 8 p.m. There will be lots of live music, good food, and activities for the whole fam. New Rochelle is celebrating on North Avenue this Tuesday. Officers will be demonstrating their equipment and their patrol vehicles. It's happening from 5 to 8. And in Orange County, the Newburgh Police Department is hosting their night out, too. There will be food trucks, music, and so much more from 6 to 8 p.m. The Austining Volunteer Fire Department and many surrounding fire agencies got their fire engines ready for a beloved annual parade. Check this out. Last night's Austining Firefighters Parade started at the firehouse on Camp Woods Road before making its way along Croton Avenue. This year's event was held along with the Westchester County Volunteer Firefighters Association Convention Parade. And the Millwood Fire Department just received a new vehicle that we're told will help with off-road rescues. Senator Pete Harcum announcing the delivery of the utility terrain vehicle just yesterday. We're told that it was purchased with a $50,000 state grant. That vehicle is designed to help firefighters and other first responders reach off-road areas of tough terrain in the community during accidents and emergencies. With a new school year starting just next month, there are efforts to address the continuing financial problems of the East Ramapo School District. This week, the State Education Commissioner ordered the school board to increase taxes an additional 4.38 percent for the upcoming year to help support its public schools. It comes after a parent and the NYCLU appealed to the state, stating the school board failed to adopt a budget that protects its public school students. In June, voters approved a budget with a 1% tax increase, but the district has a years-long history of budget fails. I think this gives an opportunity um, to East Ramapo, whose students have been denied right a sound basic education for many, many years. The school district's new superintendent says that they are working with other stakeholders and will share more information soon. And with the school year coming up, Yonkers Mayor Mike Spano announcing the launch of the city's annual Backpack to School Donation Drive. It's the 13th annual donation drive. It provides backpacks and school supplies to Yonkers Public School students all in need. Donations can be dropped off at the listed locations until Sunday, August 18th. And today is the last day that you can help your town reach victory in the five towns of Rockland Blood Drive Challenge. The challenge wraps up today at Habershaw Town Hall. You can donate between 10 and 3 p.m. Trophies are up for grabs for the town that collects the most blood and the town with the most newly registered Red Cross blood donors. All right, let's get another check of your hyper local weekend forecast with Stormwatch Team Meteorologist Skylar Day Harmon. Good morning, Skylar. So with those storms that we are looking at as we head into the second half of our Saturday, 